I make money. So I'll start with my job in New York City. I left Amazon a few years ago to work at IBM so that I could work in New York City. And life was all good. I was making good income and also had lots of free time. For software engineers, as long as you get your work done, um, you get all this time. So what did I do with my time? What did I do with my time? I just had a lot of time. Um, cleaned, I uh, went shopping, I did lots of dance classes. Actually, yeah, I explored a lot of dance classes. You're forgetting um, one thing. What? You're forgetting one thing. What? Sleepy. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I slept a lot. It was crazy. But then one day I got a recruiter email from Meta saying that they want to interview me. And so I was like, you know what, I can spend my free time just going back and applying to jobs. As I was interviewing, I was wondering, people already work full-time jobs or like part-time jobs on top of their normal job. So I was wondering, do people work remote jobs, like multiple of them? And so I looked into it and yes, there's this community called Overemployed. And it's really simple. It's basically exactly what I just said, which is you work multiple remote full-time jobs. And there's a lot of stories, uh, people overemployed. So for example, there's this one guy who makes over a million dollars a year and works five jobs. So as I was looking into overemployed, I got two offers from two different companies, one from Meta and one from Tinder. So now I had to make a decision. But first, <laughs> tea break. <laughs> so what I did was I kept my IBM job and then I accepted both of the offers. But even before I accepted both of the offers, what I did was I leveraged both offers and negotiated salary for both companies. And I ended up with a salary of over $820,000 a year. Looks like pee. Psst. You said it's like pee. Okay, so it's yours. Not as smoky as I remember it. Because it's older. Yeah, it's been sitting out for a while. Okay, so how did this play out? Um, first minor obstacle was I had so many laptops um, from all the companies, and people have a way of getting around this. Um, but I just, I was fine just switching laptops back and forth. And we also had multiple phones but that was fine, that was not a real obstacle. The real obstacles were meetings. I had a very simple calendar system and it's nothing fancy, I literally just put the recurring meetings on all my calendars and then any ad hoc meetings I would add manually. So not very creative. And that solved most of my problems. Another thing was time zones. So for Tinder, that was Pacific time and I was working remotely in New York um, when they are based in LA. So a lot of their meetings didn't really overlap, um, so that was fine. The next problem was Meta started requesting all of us to come back to the office. So that was very difficult. I had to come up with a plan. I brought my Tinder laptop, my Meta laptop, and my IBM phone so that I could work both companies at the Meta office. That made me super anxious, but I made it work somehow. And then I ended up getting caught by Tinder for using the Meta network, but that's another story. You don't have to finish it, you don't like it? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it tastes good, it's just black tea at this point. So I had meetings, sometimes out in the open, 
at med offices. I tried to, I, yeah, literally, <laughs> it was terrifying. Sometimes I could find a, a, a secure room, but sometimes all of it was taken. So I was, I just find like a, a public space that was not so crowded and hope for the best. That's how I handled that. And then the next obstacle. I was kind of excited, but at the same time, super nervous. Tinder wanted to fly me out to Los Angeles. And then for another time, Meta wanted to fly me out to San Francisco. I flew out for both of those events. So those were for like a few days. And basically I would have meetings in my hotel. I would go coming back and forth, but I trudged through it. I got in trouble for a little bit because I didn't tell some companies I was like in a different time zone for like a little bit, but it all worked out. That was my experience with overemployed. So what do I think? For those who are trying to increase their income, I'd say this is a viable strategy. Just be aware of how strong you are mentally and how you might affect others. After all that, am I still overemployed?